Uh, looks like we have a couple more minutes. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm really surprised to see so many people here in the audience. Uh, have a good lunch. Uh, so the topic for today is Ask Your Doctor. Um, I said I'm surprised to see so many people here try, uh, attending a talk. I was well, kind of like a quickie talk. It's very, it will be very kind of short on how to do documentation. Um, so here, who here really likes to do documentation? Yeah, this is exactly what I thought. So I have a slide for you guys. For you guys. You know, it's usually when, when, uh, when we start doing our projects, uh, all is well. We, we hack on code, whichever language it is. Of course, in, in this conference, we love Java, but we can use any other JVM language. And uh, we have so many different tools that make it very easy to write code. We can refactor code. We can do crazy stuff with code. We can even inject bugs in our code. Uh, but then comes the time when after we have shipped these things to uh, the QA department that the, the manager comes in and say, hey, did you write a documentation for this thing? And I say, um, it's uh, a little bit late. It's uh, 3 p.m. on a Friday. I really want to hit the, the bowling lanes. I don't have time for documentation. And your manager says, I don't care. You have to do it. And then we had to suffer through several days of trying to do this thing. Now, we know. So what do we face? That's, that's pretty much me, whenever I, I need to do some documentation. And there are a few things that we find uh, when we are actually dealing with documentation. The first thing is where there is a plethora of document formats. So which one do we pick? Do we go with HTML? Um, maybe. Uh, do we go with XML? Do we have any XML lovers in-house? See, this is what I keep telling you guys. XML is not the way to go. Uh, Dogbook is XML-based, but that's okay. Or we can go with LaTeX and, uh, or a proprietary format. Of course, I'm not going to say the, the name of the Office thingy. Or some other basic uh, text-based formats like Textile, like Markdown, or even Wiki. Uh, but again, you will eventually reach a point where these formats start to feel uh, really heavyweight. They, they keep dragging you behind so that you cannot write documentation as fast. The other thing is tooling support, uh, which is your preferred tool for writing the HTML. I do everything on Vim. Uh, I know it's okay do, doing things in Vim, but eventually you might need to, uh, I don't know, refactor HTML. Yeah, you can have access to some macros. Uh, what if you start using a, an office tool? Can you refactor documentation? Hmm? What if you're working on a team environment and you need to share differences on the documents that you're writing? Can you do a simple diff on them? So basically, my, my question to you, when you're dealing with these documentation, document formats, can you follow almost the same workflow that you have when writing code, but now post it on, and paste it on documentation. Can you do it? Most likely not. And this is the reason why uh, a, a group of people created a, a new kind of format, um, ASCII-Doc. Now, ASCII-Doc is not really that new. It's uh, 10 years old, correct me, Dan, if I, I'm, I'm mistaken. Uh, so it's been around for a while. Uh, it's Python-based, but there is a brand new tool out there and uh, forgive me if I say that, but it's Ruby-based. So it's OK. Ruby is not that scary. And there are ways to run this thing inside the JVM. And this is ASCII Doctor. So what if I told you that there's a better way to write this documentation, that you can do these things as you would do in your regular development uh, workflow? So here's an example. Now, this is just plain text. You see a couple of annotations. Uh, the first thing is just the title. And then we have a paragraph. Then we have another section. So those of you that are familiar with Markdown, you can pretty much copy and paste Markdown code. And, and I'll, almost that will be valid ASCII doc. Uh, oh, wow. I forgot uh, to update this slide. Because you will see that the render content of this one, the list will look a little bit different. And uh, if specifically, if you want to post code on the same documentation, 
Um, well, if you do it in XML or Dogbook, it, it, it starts to get a little bit uh, uh, ugly. And if you want to use syntax highlighting and inline annotations, um, yeah, not so much luck. So if I had updated this snippet of code to the proper thing, you will see this output. So that basic text file was transformed into HTML and gave us this. Now, HTML is just one of the many target formats that you can transform ASCII.doc to. Uh, HTML5, which will give you uh, fancier things, uh, you can transform it into DocBook, uh, po uh, DocBook 4, DocBook 5, you can transform it to, um, we're still, we're working on FAPD, FAP PDF, uh, so we'll eventually be able to publish to, to PDF. And in the meantime, if we do not support a format, uh, then you can transform this thing to DocBook, and then from DocBook, you might transform it to EPUB or something else. But eventually, we will be able to publish to uh, all those popular formats. Okay, you notice? In this case, we know what is the famous step two. Do a presentation at that box. Uh, so, ask a doctor. You can find all the uh, information about this uh, it's, it's organization of GitHub. Uh, the main project is ASCII Doctor, I said again, it's implemented in Ruby, but that's fine. Uh, there is another project called ASCII Doctor J, which is a wrapper on top of uh, plain ASCII Doctor using JRuby. And from there, we can construct any other tool based on the JVM that consumes ASCII Doctor J. In this case, we have a Maven plugin and a Gradle plugin. Now, if you give a test to the Gradle plugin and doesn't work for you, or you're missing something, then please send me a message or a tweet because I am one of the authors. So if it doesn't work for you, it's my fault, so I'll fix it. Um, you can also run ASCII Doctor through JavaScript. Uh, Ruby has a transpiler called Opal. Opal transforms Ruby code into JavaScript code. Uh, so now you can run ASCII Doctor on a browser or anywhere where JavaScript can be run. There's also a Chrome extension and a Firefox add-on. So you will see a small uh, icon on one of the sides of your browser. And if you're looking at an ASCII doc source and just click that button, boom, it will immediately be rendered and in ASCII doc, uh, well, in HTML using the default style. Now, if you're targeting HTML or HTML file, uh, the only thing extra that you need to do is to specify in a style sheet. This is just plain CSS. Here's an example of a Gradle build file that uh, configures the usage of the ASCII Doctor Gradle plugin. Anybody here already makes use of Gradle? A few? Okay. I'm pretty sure that if I ask this question next year, again, at DevOps, we'll see more hands. Uh, myself, I believe Gradle is the way to go. We'll see. Uh, so the only thing that we're seeing here is just where, from where to download the plugin. The last line you get there is applying the plugin. And if you follow the conventions, if you put the, the, all your ASCII doc sources inside source ASCII doc, then everything will get automatically translated into HTML because HTML is with the default option. And you get the default style sheet and the output will be uh, build ASCII doc. And there's nothing else that you need to do if you follow the conventions. But if you need to specify something else, well, in the case of Gradle, uh, just define the ASCII doctor task and put the different options. There are some options that are top level, for example, backends, and this is one of the things that we're playing with in the, in the latest snapshot, that you can specify multiple backends at the same time. And then the, the other thing that you see there, there's a map of options that are fed directly into ASCII doctor. Some of those options are uh, treated automatically or uh, interpreted automatically by ASCII doctor. For example, the table of contents, the, the placement of the table of contents will be on the left instead of the right. You want to give a title to the table of content, you can use anything here. And that other thing, project version, yeah, that will be enabled kind of like a variable inside your document. So in this case, I'm telling it that I'm grabbing the project version from Gradle, which could be anything, and I put it in the ASCII doctor option so that anywhere in your document you can refer to it. That's pretty cool. And another interesting thing that I like about uh, the implementation of ASCII doctor by ASCII doctor 
is that this is not a simple text to output from our uh, processor. What ASCII doctor is actually doing is generating an AST of your document. So take a moment to get that to syncing. An AST of a document. What can you do with ASTs? What can you do with trees? Well, you can inspect their nodes, you can change their properties, you can change the whole content of the tree if you really need it. Which means that if you have access to some extension mechanism that will give you a portion from the AST as the processor is, that discovers these chunks of code, and now we're treating documentation as code, then you can do something extra. How cool is that? In my case, I'm very, very crazy uh, by uh, ST transformations in Groovy because this is one of the things that we can do. We can change the behavior of a class just by adding new bytecode. In the case of ASCII Doctor, we change how the document will uh, be rendered at the end, at the contents of the document, by uh, fiddling with this AST. This is a very powerful feature. Here's another thing. Uh, there is another member of the ASCII doctor community, which is called ASCII Doclet. So writing as Java doc, uh, we've been doing this since the first days of Java. I believe this is a good thing to have. Uh, prior to this, it was kind of difficult to have a documentation that matched your sources or that, that were at least in the same source file. Uh, but the Java doc syntax can be a little bit limiting. If you enable ASCII doclet, then you can be as expressive as you want when writing those Java doc comments. Now, the only thing that might be missing today, but certainly something that we hope that will be there in the, in the, in the near future, is that your IDEs of choice, whichever one it is, I'm not going to preach about an IDE right now, but that you can do a live preview of that Java doc that is using ASCII doc. That would be great. Uh, seeing is believing. Now, there is another guy in the ASCII doc community that has created uh, a website. Uh, that is the address, docgisnaro.se. So he's from Sweden. Yay, Sweden, thank you. Uh, you can point any gist that contains ASCII doctor sources to this site, and boom, you get it rendered with the default settings. So. This is a snapshot that I presented here. This is how I rendered it. I just took a screenshot and pasted it here on this presentation. And that's it. So going back to that. So if you wanna, just want to give it a quick try without installing anything on Chrome or Firefox, just go to this place and start uh, fiddling around with the uh, syntax. Now you want to see more real life examples of this thing being put in use. Well, so happens that Groovy, Golo, and Ceylon uh, use ASCII doc as the format for their documentation. Now, uh, Ceylon, pretty much the whole website uh, is uh, being backed by ASCII doctor, if I'm, I'm, ASCII doctor, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, Golo does not yet use ASCII doctor, but they use ASCII doc. We are trying to convince uh, Julian to uh, give ASCII doctor a try. Groovy uses ASCII doctor, but the documentation that you currently see today is not the one. So it's the forthcoming one, the, the one that we'll see uh, releasing, I believe, in Groovy 2.2, final. You will see it. The Spring Framework Manual. Those of you that have read the Spring Framework or at least seen the table of contents, you know it's huge. Because so many great things that you can find in the Spring Framework. Uh, well, they have migrated to ASCII doc. Uh, the ASCII doctor website itself is written in ASCII doc and uses ASCII doctor, so we're doc footing our own stuff. Uh, the Archelian Weld and other JBoss websites also use ASCII doc. And if you recall that uh, that publisher that uses the funny animals in covers, of course I cannot mention the name, but you know of whom I'm speaking about. They also allow authors to use ASCII doc as the format. So you can write books, whole books, in ASCII doc. There, are, there have been a couple of books already been published using this format. Um, this is, uh, well, this is pretty much that I have for you. Well, this is pretty much that I have for you.
at the moment. Uh, yeah, ask your doctor for the win because I began this journey uh, when I, I'm a book published. I, I'm a book author, and uh, I cannot tell you how bad my experience was writing with a proprietary format using one of those Office Suites uh, tools. It took me three years and a half to finish my book, 12 chapters. How, what, what, what's that? The problem that I faced was the format and the tooling. I, I really needed something that will make my writing experience very close to my development experience. So I longed something for something like, I don't know, Markdown. No publisher wanted to use this thing. But now ASCII-Doc is a serious proposal. It's something that can really be used. Now, if you go back again to just the syntax, believe me, this is very easy. The, uh, you can even extend the syntax with something that we call, uh, I'll say something about extensions. This is something that we prototype using Groovy extensions in this Tuesday here at DevOps. You might have heard of the Hacker Garden. During the Hacker Garden, uh, Dan Allen and a few others, uh, we finally developed one way to extend the syntax of ASCII Doctor. You may add a new section, something new, some new element, and have that extension be able to treat that new element. This is something that is coming in the next release. And because we're doing this thing in a JVM, it doesn't matter which JVM language you like, which one is your preference, you should be able to write these extensions with anything and then be happy. Uh, there are a few other ideas of uh, putting ASCII doctor everywhere. So my recommendation is please give ASCII doctor a try. You won't be disappointed. If you find that is something missing, that uh, there, are, there may be uh, some portions of the syntax that are not well explained, there are some ambiguity, or you're maybe missing a feature, or you would like to see ASCII doctor supported in more places, then please let us know. We're moving at a very fast speed. We're growing very, very uh, quickly. And we're trying to reach you guys, developers, because what we want is you to feel like this when you write documentation. We want you to go early on a Friday and enjoy your weekend and, not st and stop thinking about that ugly documentation thing that you have to get ready for Monday. So, uh, I think this is all I have for you guys. I, I hope I got you a little bit excited about ASCII Doc. I know I am. And uh, hope I, I hope you continue enjoying uh, DevOps. So, Thank you very much.